All right, what's up everybody? Um, week six of the 11 weekly video updates. Uh, this one's gonna be a little bit short because I'm right in the middle of working on something that I'm not yet prepared to talk about. Um, so we'll have to wait for that to be finished before I can divulge any more details about it. Um, but I do wanna go over a quick improvement we made to our documentation website and how folks can add their sites to be featured on our website if they want a link to show up from 11d.dev. So when you go out to the website, you can click this big giant logo to actually take you to the documentation page. Um, but I wanna scroll down and show you another section of the site. This is the built with 11 section. So we have a uh, short little section that shows a bunch of featured sites, uh, sites that are built with 11 And then we have the avatar section, which shows uh, basically the avatar of every single user that's created a site and that's featured on the uh, Leveny documentation. So if we want to view all the sites, we can actually go, it takes you directly to the Leveny leaderboards. And the previous way, uh, the other thing that you can sh look at here is that every um, person that is featured here gets uh, an author page. So I'll show you mine. And astute followers might note that this these author pages are actually generated with on-demand um, on-demand builders and they're generated via serverless mode so we don't actually generate any of these pages at build time um, so yeah if you want a site listed on this page if you want your name to be listed on this author's page and optionally if you want your site to be um, benchmarked in the 11 leaderboards the previous mechanism to do that was you would go out to the 11 website repo, um, you would go into our global data folder, and there was a folder in here for new sites. Um, and then you'd create a JSON file or a .js file or um, whatever data format that you wanted to add, and it was extremely manual. Uh, and there ended up being a lot of back and forth with folks that open pull requests to make sure the data was correct, make sure it was accurate, make sure there wasn't trailing commas in the JSON files, um, which happened quite a bit more than I would have liked, to be honest. Um, so yeah, it was very manual, it wasn't great. Um, so we came up with a new way to do it, um, and that is this new 11 community repo. So if you go to the authors list, this is actually linked up here on the 11 authors big giant list here, so if you will, uh, do you want to add something to the, the community repo? You can do it through there, or you can just go to 11d-community on, on GitHub. Um, and it's quite a bit better now. So you just click this big button. It takes you to the Issues tab that has the template. And we just hit that Get Started button. And it actually takes you to a form. So this is a GitHub-provided feature that lets you do um, forms to create new issues inside of GitHub. And I created one that is basically tailored to the metadata that we need to know to get your site listed on our site. Um, so the only required field here is URL. You can optionally add your source code. You can add a list of GitHub usernames if more than one person worked on the site. Um, if you want your on your author page to be listed as a supporter, we put a little balloon here next to your username. Um, you can add your open collective username here, so we can link that up. And then if you're on the super professional business network, you can add your CTA. Um, and folks that aren't familiar with the super professional business network, that's linked up here. Um, it's just folks that um, are open for business. So if you're looking to hire somebody to do some 11 work, you can check out this site. And it's a list of folks that are um, open for business. So yeah, all people need to do now is fill out this form um, and optionally fill in this metadata and then we'll get you listed on our site. It automatically creates the JSON file for you uh, and closes this issue when it's approved. Um, so let me just go out and look at some existing issues. Um, so yeah, here's one. Uh, we do add the approved moderator approved label before it gets built to the site just because I don't want anyone to automatically get links put on 11 That doesn't seem like a great uh, unmoderated 
uh, experience for us. So yep, there is a moderated label that is required there. Um, and just from a larger perspective, um, I do want to just go over the repo that sort of generates, it's a GitHub action workflow um, that will create a JSON file from a GitHub issue. So if you want to use this in your own repo um, to have a GitHub issue form template that generates a JSON file um, to create just sort of like a really lightweight uh, CMS via GitHub issues, and you could do this, use this to run um, anything you'd like. You could use it to run um, comments for your blog, uh, whatever you want to do. So that's on my GitHub, if you go out to exactly GitHub issue to JSON file in that repo. Um, and there's a little readme that shows how you can use it to set up just a generic um, a form on your own repo um, and use this GitHub issue. And if you want um, the issues to have an approved moderated experience, you can do that. If you want to remove that, uh, you just remove this approved label check. Um, but yeah, I would recommend, depending on how the output is generated, that you use uh, some sort of moderation. And it really reminded me of the workflow that um, went into this old repo around the AMP letter. I don't know if y'all are familiar with this letter to Google AMP. Uh, about Google AMP, um, there is a section down at the bottom that said supporting signatories and to get your name added to this list, you would go out and create a data file very similar to what we did for the Lemony sites. Um, and you can go out and see all these different YAML files that went into this. Um, so a very similar idea and a lot of manual um, back and forth went into these pull requests to make sure there weren't any conflicting names and data files and make sure the data files were formatted accurately. Um, and really this, this workflow would have improved on that quite a bit um, because really the only thing that you need to do is to add an, a label to the form or the, excuse me, the GitHub issue and it would generate the data file for you automatically, alleviating all of the manual um, file editing that happened on the end user's part um, and yeah, automated everything quite nicely. So yeah, it's been chasing sort of an improvement to that workflow a long time ago. And I feel like I could make a very uh, easy starter repo um, for signing open letters like this um, using this. And I, I, I don't know, I might put in some work to, to um, automate that process. So if folks want to make an open letter uh, starter template or excuse me, I, I would make an open letter starter template for other folks to use that would um, use this issue to JSON file um, action behind the scenes. So, yep, really automated a lot of um, manual work that we had for our, um, our website to get new sites added to our showcase and the leaderboards. So, um, yeah, stay tuned for the... the uh, super secret work that's happening um, that's completely in progress. Um, yeah, I can't talk about it yet. So stay tuned for that, and thanks for tuning in this week.